Yeah, so hello, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening again. Yeah, so this video I will be discussing to you about the local e commerce, and we will also be comparing it with the international setup or what we call drop shipping. Okay, so um, I am preparing this video in my mind. Of course, I will be sending this to my dear uh, students in off university. And I'm also thinking of sharing this in the public para mas magkaroon ng idea yung ibang mga Filipinos kung ano ba yung um, sinasabi nating e-commerce dito sa Philippines at ano yung kaibahan niya sa international dropshipping. Because when we say dropshipping, for a few students, there will be a separate video for dropshipping like um, ano yung model niya, right? So, hindi natin masasabi, masasabing dropshipping here in the Philippines. It's because when you say dropship, from the word itself, drop ship, ibig sabihin, the items are not um, on hand. So, po pwedeng nang galing ng China, pwedeng galing US, sa ibang bansa. And then, the supplier will ship the items to your customers. Okay? So, later on, we will be discussing um, bakit hindi siya somehow possible or why is it a challenge in local e-commerce. Okay? So, let's begin. Um, so, what is better ba? And uh, what do you think will fit your personality, your money, your budget, your capital, at saka yung location-wise mo? Okay, so let's go ahead and start. And later on also nga pala, at the end of the video, I will be discussing to you, if you want to start an international dropshipping business, itatouch ko na rin yun para isang tuhog na lang. Okay, isang discussion na lang in case na gusto mong mag-international um, dropshipping. Okay, so let's go ahead and begin. Number one, I wanted to discuss with you the good side or the advantages of local e-commerce. Pag sinabi nating local e-com, ito yung mga nagbebenta sa Philippines locally. Okay? So, ang market nito ay nasa Philippines. Ito yung mga nakikita natin sa sponsored ads sa Facebook. Naka, napansin nyo ba yon kapag ka nagbabrowse ka sa newsfeed mo and then nakakita ka ng suddenly someone selling a bag, someone selling shoes or makeup or gadgets something like that, right? So, these are local e-commerce sellers. The good side of having this kind of business is, number one, cash on delivery tayo. Okay? And this is also a bad side of it, but I'll discuss that later on. Dun muna tayo sa good side. Bakit very nice ang COD in the Philippines? Personally, what I can think of is that the foreigners cannot compete with us. So, the competitors of local e-commerce are the same people, Filipinos lang din, Unless the foreigner has like a team in the Philippines na gagawin yung fulfillment. But those big players um, in the international market, hindi na parang, alam mo yun, parang balata na yung, yung Philippine market. Simply because a lot of Filipinos really prefer COD. And that's actually in a bad side of it as well. So most people here um, are still paying through cash, diba? Um, walang masyadong Filipinos na gumagamit ng PayPal. Meron man, pero not the majority. Uh, walang masyadong may credit card. Okay? Meron mang debit card, pero you have to like, um, I don't know, online banking or something like that. Some Filipinos prefer to do Cebuana or Western Union, but majority still, in even Lazada and Shopee, two of the largest e-commerce industries in the Philippines, they still have COD. So, hindi ito natatanggal. Simply because majority of the Filipinos prefer COD. For the risk then, no? Kasi halimbawa, hindi dumating yung product or um, suddenly they just changed their minds. At least, nothing to lose. Kasi hindi pa naman sila nagbibigay ng pera. Okay? So, that's one. The good side of this is that um... Only the Filipinos can penetrate the market and the competition is not that high. Another reason why it's good to sell in the local industry is that um, small and young market pa yung Philippines. Kailan lang naman na nag-start na mag-peak ang e-commerce sa Philippines? I think it was just 2016. 
um, 2015-2017, no, it's so young. It's a very young industry and then a lot of Filipinos can still get in and get a piece of the pie. Do you understand? Although it's a little, you can say it's a little bit saturated now kasi marami, in, in, in a side, in a way, marami nang nag e commerce ngayon dahil marami nang nagtuturo and I'm one of those. We wanted to get more Filipinos to be in this industry but if you will look at it in in the more abundant way, in the positive side of it, it's still young, and there's so many opportunities in the Philippines na hindi pa natin um, natatap. Okay, if you're gonna going to compare Amazon and Lazada, um, maraming skews. Pag sinabi natin skews yung mga items or products, there's billions of items in in Amazon na hindi pa nabebenta rito sa Philippines. Meaning to say, you have an opportunity to um, get into the market na yung mga best seller sa Amazon, um, you can definitely put that here in the Philippines kung may makukuha kang supplier. Right? And we will be discussing that. We are teaching our students how you can, uh, you know, how, how you can um, order from Alibaba, from AliExpress, and things like that, okay? So, Philippines is a very young market for local e-commerce sellers. Another reason that I love is that Pinoy's are very easy to please. Uh, mga impulsive buyers kasi yung mga Filipinos, diba? They love, to, they love to shop. So, kapag nakakita sila ng bago sa paningin nila, na wala sa mall, wala sa SM, wala sa Rob Magnolia, and all that stuff, bibili nila if it's unique and it solves their problem. Okay? So, they just click on it and shop. Diba marami yung inagi hm or how much po? Diba? So, kung matatap mo yung market na yan at makakausap mo itong mga nagi hm na to, although there are people na nagtatanong lang, diba? Pero wala namang intention to buy. But we do not say 100% non, wala namang intention to buy, right? If you persist and if you sell them and, you know, nakausap mo yung mga tao na to, kasi that's the very beginning of the conversation, malay mo naman, di ba? And um, based on um, experience, may mga makukuha ka rin mga um, serious buyers from those people who do HM. And if they really, really like your product, they do follow you on the website that you put on the link. So, um, in in summary, Filipino, yung mga Filipinos, they are very easy to sell. Uh, they, you know, they they are very easy to please, and they you can easily sell to them. And sorry, I lost my words there. Okay, next. Yeah, and so since it's a you it's a new young market nga ang Philippines, it's easier to market here. It's easier na pag-practicean natin yung local e-commerce before you um, go international. Okay? Kasi mas mabilis nga ang kumita dito sa ating sariling bansa. Next, you can also turn this into a branding in eventually. If you will follow um, other mentors in e-commerce, the next step of e-commerce, of general stores in the e-commerce industry is to do branding. Okay? Sa so general store kasi is you sell anything and everything under the sun. When you go to branding, pwede mong lahat ng mga customers na bumili sa'yo before, pwede mong makulat yung mga information nila, right? Via many chat or email or the phone numbers. So you can sell, them, sell to them again. Let's say, meron ka ng sarili mong branding, meron ka ng sarili mong clothing line, or makeup line, or whatever that is that you can think of. Eventually, the experience that you get in the local e-commerce industry will make you a brand. Okay? So, you just have to gather these leads and all that. And then, eventually, that business from a small uh, general store will become a niche store and that you begin your brand. And in addition to that, pag nag-register ka, itong, itong local e-commerce uh, business mo na to, when you register and apply this to DTI and BIR, soon, since meron ka ng record, meron, nagbabayad ka ng tax. 
eventually, um, you can get housing loans, car loans, yan. Okay? Kasi di ba mahirap namang mag-apply ng mga loans in the Philippines nang wala kang documents or wala kang papers. But if you have something to show them that, hey, I am paying my tax, this is a registered business, um, bibigyan ka nila ng chance na magkaroon ng car loan and housing loan. So you can you can avail of your dream house and your dream car without paying cash. Okay? Yeah, because not all of us can, you know, can pay a uh, 10 million house in cash. Something like that. Do you get the idea? I hope you're learning. Okay. Now, oops, yan. Next, do naman tayo sa not so good side of local e-commerce. Babalik tayo sa cash on delivery. Okay? Ito din yung isa sa mga problema ng mga local e-commerce sellers now. It's because of the COD. Good yung COD sa side ng buyer kasi, uh, you know, you can get sales on that. Maraming mga gustong bumili. Basta, meron kang offer na COD. Kasi nga, hindi naman lahat may PayPal. Hindi lahat may debit card. Hindi rin naman lahat ay uh, pupunta lang sa one to pay to pay for the item. However, dito pumapasok yung mga joy reservers na kapag ka na-ship na namin yung item namin as a seller, suddenly, ayaw nang kunin ni customer. Either nagbago yung isip niya o nagalaw niya yung pera. Okay, saka na natin pag-usapan yung mga couriers and yung mga rider. But on the customer side of it, there's nothing to lose, right? Hindi naman siya nagbayad pa eh. So, these are what we call the joy reservers. So, tumataas yung return um yung return percentage sa seller kasi may mga tao na nagbago yung isip nila. Okay, so loss to. Counted na to as loss. Makikita mo sa dashboard na, yes, I got the sale, but in reality, in the back end, hindi siya profit. Gets? Okay, next. Ito na yung, yung, um, yung courier or yung mga riders, like, say for example, LBC. Okay, Kasi syempre ikaw as a seller, kailangan mong ship yung item. Hindi ikaw ang personal na mag-ship, lalo na kung naka nationwide ka, right? So you have to find a courier na magdadala ng produkto mo sa mga customers. Example nga natin si LBC, si Lala Move, mga ganyan, di ba? And there are other partners here like Ninja Van, Check Me Out, um, JNT, and Quick Fox and yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm not paid to to endorse these people, but these are the um, careers that we use in the industry. Nito. Ito yung mga, uh, at the top of my head, ito yung mga na isip ko. Now, if your if your partner is a is a has a terrible service, let's say for example, tamad yung mga riders nila, or hindi or Lazada, di ba? For example, you can also use fulfilled by Lazada. You can put your store there and then Lazada will fulfill for you. Now, kung yung mga rider, um, hindi nila din deliver ng tama or they're not doing their job correctly, hindi nila nahanap yung address, and they can just go ahead and easily tag as wala yung tao or hindi mahanap yung bahay, return mo rin yun. Okay? So, ito yung mga isa sa mga killer or pumapatay sa industry natin because even if, you're, if, if your product is good, it's so trending, it's so viral, pagdating na dito sa career, which is you don't have any control with anymore, nagkakaroon tayo ng return. So, bumababa yung percentage ng sales mo. Yes? So, kahit nasabihin mong meron kang 1 million sa dashboard, that's not exactly... Um, very accurate kasi at the back end pwedeng may mga nag-cancel na customers at pwede rin namang yung malaki yung part dito yung career pwedeng hindi na remit sa iyo yung pera pwedeng nawala yung item a lot of things are happening in the back end so these are one of the not so good side of the local e-commerce we're in sa international hindi ganito yung setup okay so, ito yung mga challenges natin if you are going to do local e-commerce. Another is the supplier. Um, it's hard to find supplies or suppliers na, let's say, wala sa Lazada or wala sa Shopee. Remember, if you want to find a unique item na una kang magbibenta, ikaw pala yung first sa Philippines. Therefore, your supplies are coming, into, uh, are coming from China or are coming from United States. If you have suppliers there, right? So, kung wala sa Lazada ron, wala kang mahanap na, um, na product similar to yours, that's a good side and a bad side as well. Number one is, 
ikaw yung pwede magpa-viral nung, vid- nung, nung item na yon. You have a good video, you have good image, you have a good offer, you have a good ad copy. So, bibili yung mga customers mo sa'yo. The bad side of it is that, paano kung nawalan ka ng supply? Yung customs dito, like if you're going to ship it by sea, matagal. Like 20 days to 30 days. Sometimes, sumaabot ng 45 days. What if your customers nga are COD? And then suddenly, nakalimutan na nila. Kasi 30 days bago mo ma-ship yung item eh, di ba? Alright, so there are very, um, there are many options here like uh, a runaround. You can either test, um, validate the market first and then you order in bulk. Let's say 100 to 200 pieces agad. Just make sure na tama yung, yung validation mo dun sa market. Otherwise, magkakaroon ka ng stocks na hindi nabibenta pwedeng palugi mo na to um, ma-ibenta o kaya balik puhunan, di ba? Wala ng profit kasi wala nang bumibili. Something like that. So, yun yung mga kalaban natin dito sa local e-commerce. Yung mga suppliers, um, pwedeng scarcity lang sila, hindi masyadong marami yung supplier or pwedeng nasa ibang bansa sila. The challenge is, paano mo siya dadalhin dito sa Philippines? Okay? And all throughout... Along the process ng course na to, we are going to discuss that how do you combat these kinds of issues. Next, um, another uh, not so good side of being in the local e-commerce is that you're going to be waiting for the money to be remitted in your bank account. Meaning to say, yung pera, let's say for example, na kay LBC. So, di ba COD? Si customer, ibibigay niya yung pera kay LBC. Tama? Si LBC ang magre-remit sa'yo ng pera sa bank account mo. Um, there are times na it's gonna take a week before you get the money. Hindi siya instant na nade-deposit sa bank account mo on a daily basis. As of now, hindi pa ganun. Uh, there is one career na merong ganong um, uh, scenario, but as of this recording, not every career in the Philippines are like that. Check me out, our CMO, it's, uh, it's gonna take you a week to get your money. If you are using BPI, I guess three days. But if you're using BDO or other bank, um, it might take you one week. Sometimes it takes two weeks for them to remit. So, ayun. So, kung ang puhunan mo ay very limited, yung pagpapaikot ng puhunan para makakuha ka ng panibagong stock, that's another challenge. Okay? So, that's one side of it. And of course, another one is that you are competing with Lazada and Shopee. Remember that in dropshipping, we do sell and profit at a higher price. Correct? Hindi tayo nagbibenta dito ng mga items that are 300 peso worth because you are using Facebook ads. Kailangan mong mabawi yung capital mo in Facebook ads. If you are going to be selling like 200, 300 pesos, wala ka nang kikitain. And there are customers who are very good as well in researching. So, i-research nila yung product mo, and then makikita nila yun sa Lazada, makikita nila sa Shopee, that the other sellers are only selling it for 300, and you are selling for 900 pesos. And they will say, 300 lang yun sa Shopee. That is a reality. Okay? So, you have to, uh, there are th- ways to combat this. Number one is your mindset and your thinking. You have to make sure that, you know, hindi ka magpapadala sa mga ganong ideas because you are doing this for a business. And I want you to know that there will be people, there will be people who will buy from you. Kahit mas mataas yung offer mo sa Lazada and sa Shopee. The difference is you must have a converting video, a very high converting video or offer to them and then great customer service as well. Because no matter how high the ticket is compared to Lazada and Shopee prices, if you have loyal customer base and if you sell a really, really good item and quality product, why not? Diba? O pwede mo siyang ilaban. Alright, so I'm running 17 minutes here. Um, let's see. The down, the, uh, let's go to um, international dropshipping naman. I don't want to take this video too long kasi I, I might bore you to death. But I'll, I'll try my best to, you know, explain it as quick as possible. But at the same time, you get a lot of ideas. And at the same time, it's not boring you. Okay? So let's go to international selling. Ang good side na to is that, number one, what I love the most is dollars. Okay? 
You get paid in dollars, you spend in pesos. How cool is that? Diba? Masarap yun. Dollars mo siya, uh, dollars ka kumita, you, you, pay, you were paid like this, and then you spend in pesos. So, yung difference nung, uh, nung currency nun is a huge, huge deal. Number two, your market is whole world. Hindi ka nalilimitahan sa Philippines lang. So, if your item is winning in the United States, you can definitely duplicate the same item and sell it to UK, sell it to Australia, sell it to Germany, okay? sell it to France, or anywhere else in the world. So, the market is really, really huge. Um, in line with that, you can scale to the moon. Kasi nga, mahab, masyadong malaki yung market para sa'yo, you can definitely scale your budget. Um, you can also scale via adding more countries that you will sell this item to. Imagine, isa lang yung product mo. Pero po pwede siyang uh, mabenta sa kahit na anong market, sa kahit na anong bansa that you prefer in your research. Okay? So, that's the beauty of international dropshipping. No inventory problems as well because hindi mo kailangan mag-stock ng marami sa bahay mo like bags or shoes. You don't need those because dropshipping nga siya. It's a dropshipping method or model meaning to say your supplier will ship the items to your customers. So, if your supplier is in China, that people from China will ship the item to wherever you want. Okay? It might take a few days, yes, but let's say your um, your supplier naman is in the United States. If you can find suppliers in the United States and can fulfill your items in the U.S., you can only take like two days or three days kuha na ni customer yung item. And that's a major change. So, dapat humanap tayo ng mga suppliers like that. And find ways in order for us to shorten the shipping time. If you resolve that problem, you will have an amazing business in international drop shipping. Next, you get your money immediately via PayPal and Stripe kasi doon walang COD. Correct? So the customers will pay you first so you get the money up front and then pwede mo na siyang pagulungin ulit. Pwede na siyang running capital ulit because you already have it. You can already spend it um, on your Facebook ads or getting the supply. Now, the downside demand of internal, international dropshipping is, number one, you compete with Amazon. Amazon is the largest e-commerce platform in the entire world. Okay? So, Amazon is offering Prime. That means you can get the item within same day. I believe meron na silang same day delivery. Diba ikaw, pag, pagka-umorder ka, gusto mo makuha mo na agad yung item mo? Yun. So, Amazon is doing that. And uh, they also, um, particularly in the United States, ha, kasi US is the largest co consumer naman in terms of e-commerce. Um, meron silang 2 to 3 days. Tapos, meron sila mga fulfillment na nakakalat or scattered in the United States. So, if your price is, uh, you know, same with Amazon, and there's so many SKUs in Amazon, okay? So, that's number one. But it doesn't mean you will not convert. I have seen time and time again that there are so many, so many people na kumikita sila sa international dropshipping, okay? I am just introducing to you one of the possible downsides, but do not limit yourself on this. There are so many people who became millionaires, multi-millionaires, because of international dropshipping. And guess what? Amazon exists. Paren. Okay? So, don't worry about this. I'm just showing you the side that this is one of the um, challenges of doing an international dropshipping. Next. Yun nga, if you are going to use e-packet from China, it might take a while because China to US, it's so matagal. Okay, so the runaround here is that you find suppliers that are already positioned in the United States or whichever country that you are going to sell to. Okay, e-packet also is not applicable to Philippines kasi it might take 60 days for your customers to get. That's why dropshipping is not really applicable in the Philippines. Okay? Tapos, usually, yung mga ganyang ipakit sa, anong tawag ito? Sa post office pakukunin <laughs> ni customer. Imagine the hassle. 
we love door-to-door delivery. Okay? So, e-packet is not gonna work in the Philippines. Next, competition naman is also tough. It's really tough. Because the big players are here in the international dropshipping. They are spending thousands and thousands of dollars in order to get customers. Okay? In order to acquire customers. So, if you're just a small time, medyo baka mahirapan kang mag-penetrate. You need patience. You need a lot of patience and a lot of money to test your products. But it doesn't mean it's not doable. You just have to be more ready and you just have to have a bigger bank account like mas mahaba yung puhun, mas malaki yung puhunan mo at mas mahaba yung pasensya mo next since it's we are spending in dollars correct so the it's um the cost per click or cpc and the cost per impression or the cpm is higher definitely a lot higher and more expensive compared to local e-commerce next PayPal can hold your funds for 180 days. This is for the first time sellers. Okay, so you have to expect this. Baka kasi parang magwala ka or something na na-hold yung funds mo. This is totally normal, lalo na sa mga first time sellers because PayPal has like this buyer protection na hindi mo pwedeng i-withdraw yung pera mo in case kasi na ma-withdraw mo siya tapos hindi dumating yung product kay buyer, kawawa si buyer. Okay, so this is like the buyer protection for PayPal that you have to uh, provide tracking numbers and proof of delivery so that they can release your money. Okay, and another thing is that um, we have a lot of horror um, experiences from the Filipinos that Stripe can also close your account ng hindi ka, you know, without doing anything about it. I mean, you can't do anything about it. If, if Stripe says, I'm going to close your account now, then goodbye. Okay, so th- those are the downsides of it. Another one, it takes more effort in the beginning if you want to use the other payment method aside from PayPal. Yes, you can use PayPal lang. However, sayang din yung, yung um, how do you call this? Sayang, lang, sayang din yung mga people who will be using their credit cards and they're gonna swipe it. So, in my opinion, from the in the beginning, you can use your, your PayPal business account lang, but then, it's better to get Stripe or to check out. Okay? So, in, but in order to get Stripe naman, uh, you need to set up first an LLC, you need to get a tax ID or yung tinatawag na EIN in the United States. Okay? So, yun. It takes more effort in the beginning. But, again, the reward is nakita nyo naman, di ba? You, you spend in pesos but you earn in dollars. Okay? Another is limited option for payment remittance for Filipinos. Yun lang ang nakikita nating payment options kasi PayPal, Stripe, and to check out. Mayroon pang isa, I think Blue Gateway or something like that. But these are the only options if you are running the business in the Philippines. Okay? So to sum up this video, um, I'm already running 26 videos based on my timer. So uh, I wish I could discuss to you the requirements for international um, drop shipping, pero isa separate video ko na lang siya para hindi masyadong mahaba. Kasi marami ring bullet points yun eh, yung susunod na slide. So, I'm gonna wrap this video up and then um, I want you to choose the risk that you are willing to take. What is your risk appetite? Are you someone who's really, you know, go get it, um, whatever it takes person and you have a huge capital naman, let's say uh, 60,000, 50,000 pesos to begin with, or 70,000, something like that. So then you go international. Okay, so I have explained to you the, the good and the bad side of both markets. So focus on one market lang if you are a beginner. Wag mong pagsabayin pareho, kasi these markets are very different from each other, so baka malito ka lang. I want you to focus on one thing. I want you to focus your strength and your effort on one thing. Once magaling ka na sa local e-commerce, then saka ka mag-international. Or once you're good at international, then you wanted to try local e-commerce, by all means. But don't do it at the same time, okay? And also, you have to be ready for sleepless nights in order to study this business. You are doing a business. Hindi ito laro. Okay, mataas ang, ang risk because you're gonna spend your money. But also, this is a very rewarding business. This is a very rewarding industry. Diba sabi nga ni Warren Buffett, the higher um, the risk, the higher the rewards. 
and this is that business. You're gonna need all of you, all of your energy, time, effort, and money to spend in this kind of business. Pero yung balik naman sa'yo, a lot of people have become millionaires in the, in the US, in the Philippines, and all around the world because of this kind of business. Okay? I want you to remember that the reward outweighs the risks. Everything in life, you have to put in some risks. But it's totally, totally worth it. Okay? In this business. So the reward outweighs the risks because this business model can be done at the comfort of your home. Imagine you are making millions and then nasa bahay ka lang. Okay? Do you like that? Do you like that sound of that? You can go anywhere in the world with your family while your business is still operating. And that, my friends and my students, is the offer of e-commerce. So you choose whether local or international e-commerce yung gagawin ninyo. With that, um, the next thing is the preparation for international dropshipping. I'm just gonna wrap this up, uh, wrap this video up, and then I'll just, you know, record this for the second, the other half, and then I'll send it to you again. Okay? But thank you for listening, and I hope you guys have learned something on this video. Bye now!